<laughs> my name is Sherman Webb Middlebrooks. I'm a lifelong Buffalo resident, full-time black man. I'm a proud um, adult supporter of the Youth Camp 4-H program with Cornell Cooperative Extension, and it's been a privilege to um, plan and coordinate this restorative justice circle event um, with the young people, and I have the honor of being able to sit next to my mama um, who attended the event. So just, um, mom, just real quick thoughts about like the event and how it went, um, and what do you think this can do for our community going forward? Hi, my name is Sheila. I'm Sheila Webb. Um, today has been a very eventful day for me. Um, I'm very proud of my son. I'm glad I came out to support. And um, I, learned, I learned quite a few good things today. Um, with people's different opinion on stuff. And uh, a lot of powerful stuff was said. Um, I can't really say like, you know, word for word, but um, it was very educational. Uh, talked about, you know, what's going on in different communities. Mm -hmm. And um, how do we, how, how do we stick together, get together and stick together and going forward and improving. Yeah. And um, me personally, uh, I never really gave it no thought because I was never like out there in the society uh, with the type of work like my son does. And um, I'm just now getting out of my shell and realizing that my voice does matter just as just as much as the next person and i say that to say because i always told him he has a voice and freedom of speech yeah that is definitely um that's definitely how I grew up, um, always hearing that and really um, instilling that. And so my mom never really like, well, I can't talk about you like you ain't here, you here. So you never really like said that as if you didn't mean it. So like you said it, but you also acted on it. So when I did speak up, you did create opportunities for me to engage respectfully as a young person. And when I wasn't so respectful, you definitely made sure I knew and got it back in line because you will always say it's not what I said but how I said it yes. and so I just always try to be mindful of no matter who I'm communicating with not just focusing on what I'm saying but the delivery um, on how I'm saying it um, and so I think that that's tremendously important as we have these difficult conversations between black people white people um, those who have and those who have not and so just making sure that like we're communicating in an honest clear and transparent way so the last thing that I want to just talk to you about real quick and just get your thoughts on is what does it mean for like folks particularly white people to be an ally to black people and other non-white people in the community so like an ally somebody who got your back a battle buddy somebody who supports you what what does that look like um, for white people um, to be allies and support black people and non-white people in our community um first and foremost they have to I'm trying to find the, the right word that I want to say, and, and it's a little word, of course, and the ones you always get stuck on. Mm -hmm. But they have to believe in it. Uh -huh. They have to want to be, mm -hmm. you know, a part of and making a difference, you know, for other cultures and stuff. Not doing it just to be seen. Mm. Performances. Perform right, that yeah. word right there. Not, mm -hmm. you know, don't don't give us a performance. You know, uh, be there for us and stuff. Uh, help us with resource. Mm -hmm. uh, extend that extra hand. Uh, just give us a chance and believe in us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I feel that. Because we are somebody just as well as, as you are a person. Yes. And so we need to be heard. And as I spoke earlier today, uh, it takes a village to, you, you know, to, 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 to come together, you know, and just like it took a village to raise, you know, kids and stuff, it takes a village to raise a community, mm. you know, and with 
That being said, that means everybody has to come together, you know, and it doesn't, and it don't really have to be as one individual, but as one in thoughts. Mm. Yeah, yeah I, I like that, man. Thanks for sharing that. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, I would say like what it looks like for white folks to be allies to black people in community is um, using your privilege in spaces and places where like black people either aren't invited, aren't welcome, or in spaces and places where black people wouldn't even be safe. That's first and foremost. Use yes. your power and privilege um, in that way. The other thing is, so like, Black people didn't create racism. We didn't create the system that we live in. Um, but but we, it's our problem to deal with. It's our problem to manage. Um, we didn't create it. So in keeping that in mind, like it's up to white people um, to fix this problem that that they started in terms of creating racism, creating prejudice. Um, it's it's their responsibility to to end this because they started it. And so a lot of white folks feel intimidated um, and feel like if if black people get if other groups and nationalities get then that means that they lose and I understand where they're coming from being a global minority they've had to go throughout the world be um, colonial colonialist um, be imperialist um, take rape and pillage throughout the world because they come from a small um, segment uh, of the of the world and they are a small part of the population and so they've had to go throughout the world and taken from places and people that do have an abundance because mm -hmm. they come from a place of scarcity. And I think now that we live in the time and, and age that we live in now, um, we just have more eyes on the, the disparities. We have more yes. eyes on the fact that there's a lot of people who don't have and there's a small amount of people who do. Um, and a small amount of people who do will do everything in their power even selling out people who look like them, yes. um, people who are related to them, they will sell them out for their own benefit and gain because they have a scarcity mindset. So I think what it really looks like for white people to be an ally is for them to operate with an abundance and mindset, with a, with a mindset of grace and space and with a mindset of, of generosity because they have to understand um, that it's it's really a us versus them and it's not a black and white, it's a have versus have not thing, it's an equity yes, thing. And that like part. some people who they identify with um, benefit from them being poor. It's a lot of poor white people in this country too, it's a lot of uneducated white people in this country too, it's a lot of white people that's gone through a lot um, and they just have been told this lie that they hold on to some of them that at least they're not black, they're doing good. And so if we can get some truth in their hearts and minds and start dispelling that and focus on these kids and the next generation, that's the best chance that we got. And that's why I really focus on youth um, and youth development. But also really just want to focus on the fact that it's important um, that we tap into all levels of family. So like to, to the white women, to the white men, to the mamas, the grandmamas, the aunties, um, uncles, it's up to you to have these kind of conversations at the dinner table, Christmas, Easter, Thanksgiving, about your affinity, about your love, about your appreciation for black people and black culture in America. Um, and until you start leading your family and having these conversations, we still going to people, have people who dehumanize and devalue us um, in this world to the point where they're willing to drive from Broome County um, to drive all the way to Topstone on Jefferson and commit a heinous act against people who they know nothing about. Um, but that started at that, at that home because that young person wasn't taught value, respect, and appreciation for other groups and people that don't identify as he do. And that's the issue with white supremacy because it's a lie that these people get told. Um, so yeah, that's what white allyship looks like to me. Um, anything else you wanna add before we go on out of here, Ma? Um, actually, no, I don't, no, I don't think so. No, no okay. I'm good. Cool, so. My mind is going blank at this point. <laughs> that's cool, mine's too, and it's been a long day. Yeah, it's um, a beautiful day. Yes. And so shout out to everybody who attended this event. Um, we look forward to seeing you at the next one if you missed it. And in the words of my hero, the great Jerry Springer, take care of yourselves and each other. <laughs>